I'm over here now. All right, we're live. All right, welcome everyone. Good Medicine Way. Another week, busy week we've had here. We just got back from family camp up in Oregon. Wonderful time there with Jonathan, Larry Wildman. And we had a, a group of about 125 people. It's about half of what we would usually run. So it's encouraging. Everybody was just peeling just to be together. And so we just really had a good time and enjoyed that. Wow Wow went over really well. A lot of folks came out. We had five drums that came. The uh, Chips Are Down singers were hosted, hosted there. We did really well. Some people said, we're finally getting it together. So we had some good guys there. Uh, some old guys. I think we're all, all the old guys were sitting there this time. About six of us. Uh, I want to welcome you. Uh, good Medicine Way. We're here in the land of the Pueblo, Sandia, and the Isla of Pueblo people on their land here, just in the shadow of the Sandia Mountains, of which uh, my son and I, three weeks ago, uh, part of a coming-of-age ceremony, we walked from 6,000 feet, 10,600 feet, almost straight up that mountain as part of a rite of passage for him in his manhood journey. And I was able to make it. <laughs> Barely, though. Once I got above uh, 8,500 feet, it's like there was no air anymore. So I did make it, and he made it, no, no problem at all. So I'm going to pray, and then uh, we're going to start our program. Father, we thank you for a wonderful week, family camp, travels, and safe travels, being back home again. We look to uh, Jonathan moving. He's already finishing up another camp in Virginia, and we're going to meet him again in August up in Canada for another camp. I pray that you give him strength as he's trying to make up for lost time, I believe. So, Lord, watch over him as he travels. And with us who are able to make it there, these camps, it was all a wonderful time. And those leaders that are leading these camps, with our good medicine way folks here, uh, all our techies and our help. Uh, pray for uh, everything that happens here. Our speaker mainly tonight, and all those that are joining us on the Zoom and in Facebook Live. Thank you in Christ's name. Amen. One other thing I want to say is that Good Medicine Way is your place to get the best of contextual teachings without having to pay for it, like in a class. I think in, and we might have to start doing something like getting CEUs if you attend Good Medicine Way because that's the quality of teachings that we have here. And tonight is going to be another one of those, our guest speaker tonight. So I just want to turn it over now. And so we're going to go to Mupadaka Ro. And she's going to lead us in a, what's it say? Creator's Word. Yes. You got it. Uh, Mike Tagubin. Do I up, Winika Veni, Winni Bamanok, Halmi Dakyapi, Lam Paltiki, Yushkion, Napechi Yuzapi, Lewatiki El Diomani, Kina Diaglape, Noah Akito. Hello, everyone. My name is Kelsey Lou Beth Monroe. My Indian name is Umpeta Daka, which means white star in the Pawnee language. I'm an enrolled member of the Southern U Indian tribe. I'm also the Kikahaki Band of the Pawnee Nation, Southern Cheyenne, Oglala, Shikangu, Lakota. I'm coming to you from uh, the ancestral homelands of the Choctaw, Chickasaw, and uh, Kickapoo, I believe. Um, I'm over here in Oklahoma in Tornado Alley. And uh, today's uh, creator's word for today is Psalm 68, verses 4 through 6. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Sing to God. Sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. I thank you all for allowing me to read this, and let's get on a little bit further into the program. Back to you, uh, Good Medicine Way people. Creator's word. Now we have a song by the Grovers. Or 
Is that right? S.J. first? S.J. is going to do his one. All right, S.J., you're up. Thank you. Oh, yeah, S.J. Okay, hang on, Marjorie. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, give me one second. First of all, my mind, my mind had to get reoriented again. Maheyo neve ho me ste na ho me ne ni amato ste. Na wo stane ne ve to tse, ne ve sta wo to tse, ne ve stam sto she wa. Ma he yo, ne ve ho me ste, na ho me ne. Ni amato haste, na wo stane ne ve stoce, ne ve stavo toce, ne ve stam stoceva. So what that song translates to in English, it means, uh, Mahio, look, look on me. Uh, I am poor. I obey you. Uh, my life, look at it, help me daily. That's what that song means. And we sing it two times through. And this uh, second song is what they call a, a wolf song. And this was said to have been sung by a, a mother wolf after she lost her, her cubs. Um, and so she sung this song. Yeah, hey, 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 Ya hey ya hey ya hey ha ya ho Ya hey ya hey hey ya hey Ya hey ya hey ya hey ha ya ho Ya hey ya hey ya hey ha ya ho Ya hey ya hey hey ya hey Ma hey yo Ne wa she wa ta ma Ne so pe yo tse ya hey Ne to baran to tse ya hey Ya hey ya hey ya hey ha ya ho Ya hey ya hey ya hey ha ya ho Ya hey ya hey hey ya hey Ya hey ya hey ya hey ha ya ho Ya hey ya hey ya hey ha ya ho Ya hey ya hey hey ya hey Ma hey yo Ne wa she wa ta ma hey Ne so pe yo te ya hey Ne to wa ran to te ya hey and so that song, it, it means uh, Mahi or Creator, um, you've taken pity on me. You helped me when it was difficult. And that's what that song translates to. When we go through difficult times, it's a really strong song. And both of those are um, Cheyenne songs. Uh, uh, I was born in Chicago, but I come from the Kachikil Maya people, what is now Guatemala. I um, also have some Swami and uh, Basque descendancy from what is now Spain. Um, and uh, I'm a, a member of the uh, Elk Scraper Society of the Cheyennes. So i um, thankful to be here. Thankful for uh, allowing me to sing and blessings to each one of you. All right. Thank you very Thank you. much. We are very Thank blessed you. to have you with us, share with us. And the Grover's going to sing a song called Ride the Wind. And uh, I believe we're going to rock it this time. Uh, <laughs> When I took a trip with Jonathan over to Ireland, there was a group out there when we showed up at this uh, YWAM base. And when that song came up, I think they were waiting for it. And when that song came up, like 30 of the YWAMers came out and they all started like riding the wind with their arms out <laughs> like this and just almost like almost a mosh pit. Mm -hmm. But 
Nobody really banging into each other, but it was this uh, kind of controlled chaos when this song happened. It was beautiful because it, it was unintended. It was like, what do you call that, a flash mob? Yeah. Yeah, you call it a flash mob. All of a sudden, 30, 30 people come out and just started dancing up and down the aisles and on the stage. It was just extraordinary. I wish I got it on video, but I'll never forget that. So I think we'll give it over to the Grovers now. Be ready to get your rock. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we got so uh, lyrics are slightly different. We use the the first verse is like the original one that Jonathan sings, and then uh, second verse is uh, we redid a song one time for International Women's Day, and so we made all the verses about women in the Bible. Um, so we just drop one of those in here for the second verse, and uh, and then the third verse is an alternative version of it that uh, Jonathan used to sing uh, sometimes, but it's not the one on the album. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do. And, uh, When the wind of the spear 
there to my rocking years there. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever seen a picture, but uh, there's a few pictures out there. Jonathan Miracle, when he was back in his rocking days, uh, Brian found one here all ago, and I just cannot believe it. With the long hair and the leather pants, I was, I was shocked. <laughs> but they, and the Lord took him from there and uh, led him on to do contextual ministry, music, and he's just been so great at this for the last 30 years now. It's just been joy. So well, now we want to go to uh, this week in Turtle Island. Actually, and, Wichoni's oh, story is for oh, Preston there. I'm sorry. That's all right. Wichoni's story, Preston. Now, this is Preston's first uh, visit to the Wichoni family camp, and uh, we he was sitting up there in the top row trying to trying to hide, I think, but I I called him down to sit on the drum, and I think he had a really good time singing there with the drum, and, and we got him on it one more time, too. We got him on the drum, but couldn't find him when we were at the powwow. I think he was hiding there at that time, but he could have came out there and sang with us at the powwow, too. So, Preston, tell us your story. Can't really hear you, Preston. Can't hear. I, you're muffled. It is. Let's try without the hear, mm, earbuds. Okay. Um. Thank you, Casey. That was a really, really interesting family camp. I was actually really hoping to go to family camp, like the year of COVID instead of 2020. But it was a very interesting experience. It was pretty much very different from any conference that I would gone to. That was very contextual, but it's very, I love how they focus on making sure that we understood. Learn about Mike just dropped out, Preston. I'm not sure what happened. It sounded great, and then it just quit. I think All you right. can't hear us can't because hear it. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, okay, a little see. glitch. We got a little glitch All happening right. here. I think it's good. Yeah. Come on. Everybody pray. Everybody face your hands there and just say, technology <laughs> <laughs> just help us out here. Come on back. Help us out here. There, now we can hear that thing. Okay. Try it again. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hey. Good. Hey, just needed to pray. <laughs> like I was saying, it was very interesting to be able to hear, uh, take part of family camp and be able to hear uh, so many different stories and having those moments of learning from those stories and, and see and hear different people of, how they came into contextual ministry and how they uh, understand what contextual ministry is important of it, of it and why they are spreading different parts of it in different areas. Um, being able to learn more about the drum personally while it was being made, there was a, uh, a little uh, seminar about being able, having hands on a um, on making a drum and it was so much fun just seeing all those people but at the same time that was the last uh, 
the second time that I was at the drum with the group, they, it was like an, I don't know what to call it, but a, a, re, a birth of a drum or a awakening of a drum. Where it was the first time people were at the drum being able to play the drum. It was such an honor to be there. And that drum was super cool. And this, the sound from it, it came from, it was awesome. That and it was very, very great to see how much the drum maker, Gary, the drum maker, was able to teach us the importance of, of the little tiny things of coming from the string and how he would make them and the things he would come from. Um, watching people dance was very interesting, seeing them in their regalia every almost every day um watching the the fancy dancers or the shawl dancers and it was very very appealing and very awakening so that that there we're not the only ones doing this but there are other people out there um might be just a little bit different than ours but it's still contextual and given me hope that we can expand and that we can that are, there are more people to to join our little sector of good medicine way thank you all right thank, thank you, you preston i was just th thinking uh, you're you're about 23 years old are you 32 32 oh my god he's got dyslexic oh. also <laughs> 23, 32. 32, 32 years old. So when you were about uh, 15 years old, 15 years old is when we had our first powwow there. So we've been doing this a long time there. Uh, and it's, we've had big years and small years that we've had. We've had many speakers, many musicians, all kinds of programming that have happened there. I'm sorry that we couldn't do the sweat lodges this year because we wanted to be very careful with uh, confined spaces and people being in COVID. So we, uh, we didn't do them this year, but we did set up what was called a teaching lodge. And we sat inside a teaching lodge with the open air on the sides. And, and Laura gave a teaching with the women, their traditional teachings. So glad you were there, Preston. Very good. I hope you can come again. Uh, maybe try one of the other camps as you go around the Virginia camp or the uh, Canada camp. All right, let's see what's up here. Now we go on to this week in Turtle Island with Kimberly Medicine Board. Kimberly, you're up. Oh, hello everyone in Good Medicine Way land, virtual and face-to-face. Um, it was interesting. I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Pope's visit to Canada starting July 24th, and it went on for six days. And there was a lot of controversy about his visit. Critics of his visit said the Pope failed to apologize for the sexual abuse the children suffered by those in the Catholic Church. So it was almost as if he may have glossed over that specific part. And then they also were hoping and wanting the Pope to rescind the doctrine of discovery there was also a gifting to the Pope, a headdress that caused a lot of um, strong feelings for or against that action. And then another report also lets us know that the Pope's visit cost, caused the taxpayers to pay $35 million for that. So it was a major thing, but I went on to Indian country today and found an opinion piece that was published by a clan mother, Louise McDonald, and she wrote an open letter to Pope Francis on July 28th. And she writes about the significance of the empty cradle board that only we can fill. And so she said that the empty cradle board is a symbol of an ongoing encounter by native peoples with the Catholic and other churches. The empty cradle board symbolizes the first embrace and maternal bond after birth. And she says, 
she writes to the Pope, our spiritual identity was assaulted and damaged wantonly and often brutally intended to deny our spirituality. So further, she states, the acknowledgement by the Catholic Church that our indigenous spiritual peoples, our ceremonies, our spiritual intelligence is a way of life that is among the great religions of humankind. And with the recognition that it is uniquely ancient, this would be of value. So she's talking directly to the Pope. The message that resonates is, we will heal ourselves and with the hope that the Catholic Church will be supportive to the native peoples of Turtle Island. And then earlier today, I went on to the Vatican News website and August 3rd, the Pope went before the general audience and he discussed the purpose of reflection, repentance and reconciliation of his visit. And that healing, he was confident and of his trust that healing would be made possible by the power of the risen Lord who can make all things new. And he said, one purpose of the journey was undertaken in Canada to write a new page and quote, to continue to walk together always closer with indigenous peoples. He also acknowledged how painful it was for the parents to not to have known what happened to their children who went to the residential schools. So this was a 17 minute summary of his visit. And I would venture to say as time goes on, as he processes what he went through, because he did hold a personal and private audiences with residential school survivors, um, that more is going to work in his heart, I would say. Because when you are listening to the trauma of people, it's not something that you can wrap your mind around fully and immediately. And so I think as time goes by, I'm hopeful that we might see some more good come of it. But I think the one thing that most people agree on is that the apology, um, some people say it wasn't enough. Other people say it was a beginning. Some people say, no, it wasn't. But whatever, whatever it was personally to people, um, whatever the results or consequences or outcomes are going to be, are going to take a long time. It's not going to be an immediate thing. So continued prayer for everyone involved, I think is probably our, our best and only strategy here because um, it's such a complex situation. We all know that and our hearts feel it deeply. All we can do is move forward in a good way and uh, continue to pray for strength for the residential school survivors, their families, and any intergenerational trauma that has happened or needs to be um, addressed and healed from here on out. That's this week in Indian country. Thank you, Kimberly. I know that that's a whole, to that's a whole topic in itself right there. So thank you for enlightening us on couple different aspects of it. I want to turn it over to Leah now for our offering and announcement. All righty. Well, yeah, a couple, I like how Kim, you said a couple of things that stood out. The natives said, you know, we will heal ourselves and, and just your focus on how is this affecting the Pope? Hopefully it will. Oh, that was cool. Uh, the announcements, or rather I'll do the offering first. It's on if you'd like to donate to the work of Good Medicine Way, uh, you can go to the top of our Facebook group. There is an image there that will let you click through to donate on PayPal. And as far as the announcements I'm aware of go, um, we've got our Women's Circle on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. We'll be finishing the Book of Hebrews in the First Nations version. Oh, yes, and if you'd like a uh, Good Medicine Way, we got new black T-shirts now and the new shipment of new turquoise ones. So, yeah, just let us know what your size is. Uh, so, let's see. So, yes, uh, Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Mountain Time is a women's circle. We're finishing the Book of Hebrews in the First Nations version this week. And then next week, we will be starting a book called The Lost History of Christianity, which takes a look at 
the first few hundred years of Christianity as it was in the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. And uh, my daughter really recommended it highly. Um, there is maybe some talk that uh, Christianity and the monks up in Asia might have uh, influenced Buddhism, and also that it, you know, a look at how it might have stayed more pure because it never got in bed with power when it was in Asia. So I'm real, real uh, curious to that, to look into that. So the women, uh, that'll be at the Women's Circle Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. And are there any other announcements anywhere? I think kind of a prayer request. I think uh, just things have been um, a little crazy in, uh, in uh, Albuquerque the uh, past month or so. Well, the next um, there was a uh, out in Gallup uh, at uh, the intertribal uh, gathering and parade. We posted a link to it on, on our Facebook page, but yeah, someone like drove a car through the parade um, and you know, just that kind of craziness is not good uh, for anybody, and so just you know, another another layer of trauma for people to uh, have to deal with. Um, and the other thing in Albuquerque is uh, uh, apparently someone is uh, targeting uh, Muslim men, and there's been four killings of Muslim men in the last six months, and uh, three of those have happened in the last two weeks. Uh, so just really need prayers for uh, our police department and our community um, just to uh, figure out what's going on and, and apprehend those that are uh, responsible, um, you know, because it has all the hallmarks of, uh, you know, uh, just kind of racially motivated <clears throat> Um, going after, you know, a xenophobic, uh, you know, people of color are, are, you know, wrecking the country kind of attitude. Um, so anyway, it's, it's especially for the, the Muslim community here in Albuquerque, it's really traumatizing and scary. And I think it's something that um, the uh, Native community in Albuquerque that we can, can relate to because, uh, you know, there's a lot of violence against indigenous people uh, in Albuquerque, uh, especially uh, our unsheltered relatives uh, experience a higher level of violence uh, if you're indigenous than if you're another race. Um, so yeah, uh, just, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace and, uh, and blessed are the peacemakers. Uh, so let's let's get out there and be a blessing and be peacemakers. And uh, and if you're not in Albuquerque, we would appreciate your uh, prayers to empower us uh, to walk in God's love in, uh, in our community. Uh, yeah. I saw that someone asked how to purchase a T-shirt. You can Facebook message Leah Grover and just specify if you want the black one or the turquoise one in your size. Uh, there isn't a cost, but a suggested donation would be about twenty-five dollars, and that would in, that would cover shipping. Tell me your address too. All right, and Claude had also mentioned about uh, the whole thing going over in uh, Israel and Gaza, a big flare-up in conflicts recently. And of course, anytime those things happen, uh, it's mostly innocent people uh, that get caught in the crossfire that are suffering the most. Um, the, the most uh, damage and loss in those kinds of situations. So, yeah, definitely, let's be praying for Israel and Gaza and the Middle East. And we got to mention, we got a back to back programming happening this, this week. Tonight, we have Michelle is going to be speaking here tonight. I've got a good audience on, too. I think we've got like 20, 24 people on right now. And tomorrow, uh, same time, we're going to have Mark Charles here in person. So we'll probably have some guests here filling up our, our location here. We'll have to do some rearranging on how we present this, but we're going to live stream it as well. Is that right, Brian? 
Yeah. Just right. fly on down, y'all. We're going to get lasagna. Come on. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get uh, meat, meat, listen, meat, <laughs> lasagna, and we got salad. So if you're able to come in, tickets are really high, but uh, it'll be worth coming. <laughs> So, Bart Charles tomorrow, is, we're the last uh, city of his, like, seven uh, city tour, on a book tour, so he have will be a book signing here. He'll be speaking about his book, uh, the one that So Sojung Ra, and he uh, co-authored together. Uh, it's very, uh, very intense, really brings out some... Uh, Really deep things, that uh, uh, troubling, but also very enlightening. I think you'll really gain a lot from the you know, perspective that uh, Mark has. So you can join us tomorrow at 6 o'clock here. And if you're in town, come and join us here live as well. And keep us in prayer. Laura and I and Bob Joni are going to be on the road taking my the last of the five kids going off to college now. He's gone, we're taking him to college. And then Laura and I will be attending the uh, Pine Lake Camp up in Alberta, Canada at the end of the month. So, be with us then. Anything else out there in, uh, in, uh, in video land? Dave threw up the, uh, the link to the event in the chat. Um, so, if you haven't found the Mark Charles info yet, uh, take a look in the chat. And I copied it over to uh, the YouTube chat. So, it's in both places. Um, and if you miss them there, just look on our Facebook page uh, for Good Medicine Wave in the events section, and it should be right near the top. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Leah, and all those who have announcements. We want to turn it over to Christina. Uh, as you know, Christina is not with us. This, uh, she's now uh, virtual. She's back home again. But uh, uh, we kind of got an empty chair here now. It kind of need her back here once in a while. And uh, Christina, Sean Dean's over here, uh, sitting at the table, uh, says that he is uh, missing her new sister. So, <laughs> yeah, so we appreciate you and glad <laughs> you did the internship and the class and all goes well. You're feeling better now, I know, and uh, we look forward to hear, hearing and reading your, your papers that you have. And he's going to be introducing our speaker now. Christina, go ahead. Hi, friends. I saw Shandine's arm kind of just in the distance. <laughs> Hi. Good to see you all. Um, I saw a couple more things in the chat, though I'm just going to share those before I introduce Michelle. One is, would Jesus eat fry bread? Um, there's a campaign for scholarships for students right now. And if someone wants to put that in the chat, that would be awesome to help, it's just a really beautiful healing space for college age um, Native students. And um, it's in partnership with InterVarsity and crew. And um, if you'd like to give, I would be such a blessing. So there's that in the chat. I also have, um, yes, please pray for the conflict right now in Gaza. Um, pray for Israel, also pray for Palestine. Um, that's been very heavy on my heart. I have a, my shirt says make hummus, not walls that I got um, in Palestine. I stayed with a Palestinian family um, a few summers ago before the pandemic and really got a, an up close view of the conflict and the humans, human rights violations and settler colonialism that our, our family overseas is experiencing. And um, I think as Indigenous peoples, there's like a deep pain understanding of um, things that are happening in real time right now in Gaza. So please continue praying, continue, you know, having our, our siblings um, in Gaza and Palestine um, in your prayers. Pray also for Israel. Um, if you'd like, <laughs> this is kind of out of the script, but... My friend and I, when we stayed with these families, they, the one thing that I, they asked us is, is that we'd share their stories of the things that they had experienced. And so we did kind of an excerpt and shared some of their stories um, a couple years ago. 
But if you'd like, I can put that in the chat. And if any of you want to learn more about what some of our, our friends overseas are experiencing and how to pray, um, I will put that in the chat for later. But yes, transitioning with all the wild things going on in our world, it's very good to be in community and to be in prayer with one another. But um, I'm excited to have Michelle speak tonight. Um, I first um, met Michelle briefly, good, brief, but very good at Nate's. Um, she spoke at our symposium this summer and she definitely gives a uh, woman, baddie, uh, all that awesome energy. So excited to have her here. Uh, Michelle is, and you might need to help me, Michelle, um, with some of the pronunciation so that, you know, um, being from the other side of um, Turtle Island, <laughs> needing some help with pronunciation. Um, Niheya. Nehiao, you got it. Nehiao Isku Cree woman. Her roots are Saskatchewan, but she has called um, Edmonton. And can, can you give us the original pronunciation of, of your homeland? Yeah, I'm Miskwichiwa Sky again. Awesome. Thank you. She's called at her home for the past 20 years. She's assistant director of the Native Healing Center in Edmonton. Um, sorry, my, my computer is doing weird things. She's the assistant director of the Native Healing Center in Edmonton, and she has her own business, which is called Esquil Health. She holds a BA in social sciences. She has a very strong value for community care for grassroots initiatives, for um, community engagement. And um, she started an initiative called Healing Her Home Fire. Is that right? Awesome. And this initiative, it's based on education. It's based on advocacy and outreach and community support, especially around the crisis of homelessness, which is so important. She really has a deep understanding of the profound struggles of Indigenous peoples um, and how they experience that in her city. Um, and she also holds the understanding that um, connection, culture, and creator um, can be a path forward for healing and harmony um, for all of creation and for the world. So very excited to hear from my sister today. And thank you for joining us, Michelle. Oh, thank you so much, Christina, and thank you um, for the invitation to come just to share a little bit of, of what I know to be true. I was taught a long time ago, um, teach what you know. And for me, my journey has really been, well, because first of all, I'm Nehe Oskoyo, I'm a Cree woman, so I know that really well, uh, but I also know women's wellness. I also know the matriarch. I also know um, you know, that women are the backbone of community. So I'm going to talk about that this evening. So I feel very honored um, to be able to be here. So I'm joining from, I, I'm in, I'm in a hotel room. I don't know if you can see my, there's two beds behind me. The lighting's not so great, but I'm in Sutina um, Treaty 7 territory. So I'm out here um, helping out with a, a economic development youth summit so it's been a great week so far so i'm here i'm in not my home home well i call it miss quichi west guy again because i've been there for 20 almost 22 years now but i grew up in saskatchewan so i'm a prairie girl um, i'm a member of kwakatoos first nation i think it's always important to acknowledge where you come from uh so i'm really honored to be here we're gonna talk a little bit about the matriarch um, from my understanding you know the grandmothers are the matriarchs they, they're the ones who who had the decisions but I'm also going to talk about healing her home fire so I'm really looking forward to sharing a little bit about that initiative and where it came from well ultimately everything comes from creator right creator gives us the desires he puts those dreams those visions and desires in our hearts and then it's really up to us it's our responsibility to carry them out the best way that we know how like we've all been given tools we've all been given capacity so for me my capacity is, is has been working with the community of women and and bringing this healing her home fire to life so i do have a couple of pictures um 
that I'm going to share. So I'm going to share my screen right about now. I always get nervous around technology. Always. I'm not, I'm not great. Let's just say that when it comes to technology. All right. So here we are. Um, so that's me. That was a couple of years ago. Um, I picked this and, and normally this would have been a, a GIF where like, this is the Oprah, the, the one episode where she's like, you get a car, you get a car. Like she's like, you know, just inspiring, just loving the whole audience. So that's how I feel. I feel very excited that you have decided to spend your Tuesday evening with us and um, hearing the stories and, and offering the prayers. So thank you. I, I bring that Oprah enthusiasm today. Thank you for joining me and for being here. I acknowledge that I, I stand on the show. So this is young me. I was so little here. Sometimes when I show this picture, I have to admit that it does hurt because it does take me back to my childhood and growing up um, indigenous, indigenous women in this nation has not been easy. And even to this day, you know, Indigenous women are the most vulnerable in, in this nation, you know, we're, you know, four times, five times, I don't even know the statistic anymore, but we're, I will say five times more likely to be murdered or experience violence. So we are very vulnerable. So when I was growing up, I experienced in, in my home, um, a lot of violence and a lot of struggle. So some days, you know, when I look back and or when I think back, I, you know, at, and at this picture, some days it does still bring me pain, even though I've, I've gone through a lot of therapy, I've gone through a lot of ceremony. Um, you know, I believe ultimately that Jesus is the healer, you know, is good medicine, but it takes a lot of work. You know, the Pope came to visit Masquachis and I actually, I actually went um, with some aunties who had gone to residential schools. And so I went, it wasn't really my jam, if I were to be honest, but I went to support them and stand beside them in solidarity. And for them, and, and I cannot speak for anyone else, but I can speak for them and their experience that that was a healing moment, that that was a moment of truth for them. So, but we're all on this journey of still continuing to heal the struggle. The struggle is real for myself still. And, and I see the struggle is real for our people still. And it is because of colonization. It is because of residential schools. It's because our families, um, were taken, were, I want to say torn apart. And then I was thinking in my head, no, I can't, that's too harsh, but that's the truth. That's the reality. Our families were torn apart. So today, when I look at this picture, um, I feel okay about it. You know, I, I remember the bad things, but I also remember that, yeah, my parents, you know, tr did try to show me love. They tried to bring love you know, within our, our own family, the best way that they know they knew how. And I, I actually had to reconcile with this. So I acknowledge that I stand on my mother's shoulders. I'm the person that I am. And I gotta be honest, that took me a long time to, to say. I think it was about five years ago when I, I took some time just to really think about my relationship with my mother. Um, who is the matriarch right now in our family? And, and come to peace that I am because of her. I am because of her struggle, because she pushed through barriers. She um, rose when, you know, when she wanted to stay on the ground, right? She rose. So I acknowledge that I stand on her shoulders, but I also stand on the many, many women who've walked before me and I stand on their shoulders that I'm able to live a good life because of because of them. So I, I feel like it's important for me as a, a, a indigenous woman, as a Cree woman to acknowledge the women who've gone before me, you know, in this country, you know, we weren't seen, we were kind of the bottom at the bottom. Um, and we're still trying to find our voice. We have found it, but we're still, we're still trying to sit at the tables. We're still trying to say, say hey, we have the gifts we have the leadership cap capabilities so I, I just think it's important for me to acknowledge that so this is a word esqueo so i just want to show you this this is the actually a logo 
um, that I have for my business, Esqueo Health. And for me, when I first wanted to start a business, I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be women's health. I really want to focus on women's wellness because that's what I know to be true for me. That's my knowledge. That's where my knowledge comes from. And so right away when I was, went to go register my business and create a name, I knew that I needed to bring this word back, not only just to bring it out there to the world, but for myself, I'm reclaiming my identity. I'm saying a sueo means woman, and this is what my business is called. So I call this sueo health. Um, so that was really important. And it was really personal to me for many years of my life. I was so embarrassed about being a Cree woman. So, so ashamed. I remember praying at night to God, can I wake up with blonde hair and blue eyes? And that was like a true prayer. And I had, I had a little bit of faith that that might happen. But I, I remember praying that many times. So I struggled deeply with who I was and who creator made me be. So when, you know, when I was healing, when I was doing the hard and heart work, and I was reclaiming who I was, this felt really good to do. So Esqueo. So this word Esqueo in Cree means woman. And when we take this word, it's actually derived from another word. And I love our Cree language. I'm horrible at it but I love it. And when you take the word out of a square or it's derived out of iskatu, which means fire. So creator has given us fire as women, but I think all of us, we all have a spirit. We all have fire that creator has given to us. So I, I love this word. I love where it comes from. And that I hope to continue to carry the fire that creator has given to me and to walk the path that I'm to walk. And I trust, you know, as you're along your journey, that you will continue to carry the fire that creator has given to you. Not everybody's, not everyone's fire is going to look the same. In fact, we should look different. All right, some might be blazing really high. Some seasons I might have just a couple of sparks in my fire and that's where I need the community and I need the love and I need the prayers. So we all go through these different seasons. So not everybody's fire is the same, but we all have fire. Creator has all given us spirits. So I think for me, it was really, really important just to bring this word back for myself, but also for the young women, the women that I'm around. And just, I wanted to make this word um, like a staple in our community. So I live in a city, I live in a pretty big city. And um, so a lot of people now know what Esquail means. And so I, I just, I love that. And I love to honor creator and who I am and to be able to share this. So let's talk a little bit about the grandmothers and the women who have walked before us. Um, we would say that they're the ones who hold the power. They're the ones that hold the knowledge. And I actually wrote this, this is part of, I had written a paper and um, I called it the matriarch in the city. And as I was writing it, um, and I was sitting down, so I sat down and I was listening to story after story and, and doing research, but mostly it was like more medicine for my soul than anything. And somebody had said this, out of her, out of the matriarch flows a deep well of knowledge that sustains community. And I've been able to witness that. Um, I've been able to, I've been honored and privileged to be able to watch the women, the matriarchs do what they're meant to do. And, you know, because it has been because of the Indian Act and again, colonization and the residential schools that our whole system kind of turned upside down. And, and the role that women carried, like we, we, for me as a Cree woman and my teaching and my understanding, women were the matrix, they were the backbone, they were the center, they were the ones who kept everything going within community. So I remember hearing this story about 
um, the men, the men, one of the men's role. And, you know, I can't, I cannot speak for the men. I know men are powerful. I know they have a role. So I just feel like that's important to say, but I'm just sharing what the matriarch, what I know to be true of the woman. So the men would go out and they would hunt. And uh, my dad was a hunter. So we often, oh, we often had much wild meat growing up. And that's why to this day, I do not enjoy wild meat anymore. No way. So it would be the men who would go out to hunt and then, and then they come back to the community and they'd let the women know where, where they had killed in the animal. And so then the women would go back onto the land and they would go prepare the animal. They would be the ones who would, you know, I don't know, hide it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the proper, I'm not a hunter. I'm not, I don't know the proper lingo, but they would, would be the ones who would prepare that animal because they knew what the community needs. They knew what family needed this and that. So they were very, um, they distributed it very equally and made sure that no one was left without. So women really carried this big role. So if we look at the teepee, I don't think I have a picture of a teepee. No, nope. that's Trudy. So this one, I just want to quickly tell you, this is Cookum. I call her Cookum grandmother. She, her name is Dorothy. She's very, very fragile. Like she's just tiny. And this is when we went to go medicine picking. Um, and she's just a beautiful woman. And I really believe that creator had brought her into my life. Um, I don't have any grandmothers of my own left, you know, on this side of heaven anymore, but Creator's so good. So he's brought this woman into my life. Um, and so I do some work in the inner city community. So where you really see, you really see the struggle of our people, homelessness, addictions, profound poverty. So I met Dorothy because I was looking for a church. I searched high and low because I was looking for a church that really walked out the New Testaments that, that Je you know when we look at the stories of Jesus he went to where the people needed him he was living water for the people and um, so finally went to our inner city and I and as soon as I got into the church service I thought this is it. This is my home. This is where, where my lodge, this is where church is. So ever since I've been there, oh gosh, and that has been 13 years, 13 years later. Um, so this is where I met Cookham Dorothy and it's been a really good dream, um, really good journey with her. She's a residential school survivor. Um, I got permission to share her story a little bit, but she's amazing and she's been medicine to me. When you're in the inner city, a lot of people, um, if I am setting up, so say we're serving lunch or we're, we're doing something for the people or have an event there, you know, some people are really scared or some people will like decide not to come because they're scared of that area of town. And, and this one is not, this is her, she chooses to stay in this community. She will walk that street. Even I will not walk the street alone at night. I have no problem during the day, but even she will walk the street alone at night. And she is just fierce and fearless. And she's all about the people. And, uh, you know, she just can just give a look to a community member and, it's like, you know, that grandmother look or that mother look that you better, you better smarten up or you're going to get some trouble. She can just give the people, the, the community a look and they respect her. So I am very thankful for her in my life and the love that she's given. One thing that we have been, we, when residential schools came into play, yes, we lost. I heard this from an elder, you know, we lost prior to the residential schools, we lost our land. We lost our rights. We lost our ceremony, our way of being, our spirituality. The fourth one is when they really, they really got us when we lost our children. But when, but all of these things really is love too. I would add on, we lost love. We lost 
knowing that we're loved, knowing that creator loves us. We're, we've been given messages of very opposite to that, contrary to love and um, who creator is. So we lost love. And along my journey, creator has brought these grandmothers. Here's another picture of a grandmother in my life who brought love to me you know, in a very tangible way. I know creator loves me. I know that a hundred percent, but there's something beautiful when you get to experience the grandmother's love. There's something gentle, there's something nurturing, there's something beautiful. So I feel really blessed. And for me, that's healing. So this picture is Trudy. One thing about the women in my experience is when you call when you see a need, that they will respond. So in this particular moment, um, this was the week of the missing and murdered Indigenous women. And some other women want to put together a wellness, um, a wellness day, because it is hard for us, you know, when we have to go hear the stories, when we're reminded of the, the women who are still missing, who are still struggling, and the families who, you know, have a hole in, in their circle. So it's really hard. So anyways, immediately, Trudy, this, this matriarch says, yep, I will be there. And so as you can see, she brings, she comes with her suitcase and everything else. And so that little um, I, I believe that's a buffalo head and she calls it Rosie. So she brings Rosie wherever she goes with ceremonies. She has some stage in there and she actually painted Rosie. She had some nice drawings on, on Rosie. So wherever she goes, she's ready to bring her ceremonies, her teachings, but most importantly, her love. She had taught me when you hug another person, you hug heart to heart. So a little thing to perhaps you could practice in your world, hug heart to heart. Um, and, and that helps us. That's healing for us as well. We're going to move on to the next. I had to take a deep breath because I know sometimes I, uh, this can be very emotional for me. So I have a studio in Edmonton. Um, so where I teach fitness classes, I host wellness web wellness webinars. Like I have my, um, uh, that's where, yeah, if I'm doing a webinar, well, here I'm in the hotel room, but if I were to, in, to be in MS Wichita Sky again, I would be in my studio because it's nice and bright lights. So I do webinars, but I host other things too. Like I, in the last five years, I thought if we're going to do women's wellness, working out, push-ups and running it's more than that so we're we started to bring in ceremony so Trudy would lead a pipe ceremony um, in that space sharing circles we do potlucks uh, so it's been a really good space for us women to gather and if we're good, talking about our own health we have to be mindful of all women and not just us who are privileged to be able to go put on our workout shoes and workout clothes and we have the capacity to go gather, right? We had to be mindful of the community. So one morning, it was a Saturday morning. Oh gosh, it was about 9 a.m. And we had a fitness class. And I remember I opened that glass or I was walking up to that glass door and there was a young woman in Nehao Esquel, a Cree woman. She was sleeping right on the sidewalk. That's concrete and with those three blankets there she's sleeping on that sidewalk and um so I knew I had to get in the door and I didn't want to bother her because this was her home this was where she felt safe to sleep but I had to get through so I just you know quickly um tapped her on the shoulder and I said excuse me I'm coming through and um and just letting you know, there's some other ladies are coming. Don't feel like you have to move. You could stay here, but there's other ladies that are coming. So I managed to just squeeze, squeeze by and get in. And then the other ladies had to come in through the doors as well. And they also mentioned, oh, there's a lady down there. Um, so when I left all the blankets, when I came out, all the blankets were folded up nicely and she was gone. So I thought, 
wow, here we are working on our own health and wellness. And there's nothing wrong with that. But here we have this woman who's sleeping on our streets. Here we have this woman who's one of our own, who's struggling so profoundly. And I felt compelled in that moment that we got to do something. I've got to do something. If I have to do it all by myself, I've got to do something. But I also think I have a network of women. I have a community of women. And so, so that started a, a thought. I think everything starts with a thought and an idea. And I said, something's got to happen. I was like, we can't solve this whole idea of homelessness, this whole crisis of homelessness, but we certainly can play a part. We certainly have a responsibility. So that started conversation and dialogue. So I'm a dream, I'm the visionary. I, I have all the ideas, like, let's do this and let's do that. And, and um, always, um, my mind's constantly going. And I think it's really important that you have that balance. So, so balance came into my life and her, her name is Kate. And she um, calls me up and she said, I want to talk about your idea. Cause I actually, I have a Facebook page called Esquayo House. So it's my business page. And I actually put it out there saying, hey, I put it out there. I talked about homelessness. Um, and so she responded. And so we met for a coffee and she said, what would this look like? And she's very pragmatic very uh, so being a visionary I'm not very pragmatic sometimes or very practical at all so she was and so we talked about what could this look like what should we do and, and we had this concept what if we raise money what if we focus on just one woman um, and really help support do whatever we can walk alongside of her and so that started that started good synergy, that started this good idea. So then I gra grabbed another group of ladies and we start to talk about it. And I think it's important when, whenever we're with community and doing community things, it's important to consult the community. It's important to get other voices around that table. So then from there, we, we got, got a group of women together and um, we all thought this was a good idea. This was definitely doable. Um, and so started the started this journey. And so we needed a name. If we're gonna do this, if we're gonna open up a bank account, we're gonna you know create um, this organization. If we're gonna do fundraising, we gotta name this. Uh, I think that that was important. And so there's three of us sitting around the circle, and I know the teachings of the teepee. And for us, the teepee, as Cree women, the teepee, that is the women's lodge. That's our lodge. We take care of that. We're the ones who set that teepee up. Um, and in the middle of that teepee, there would be that fire. Again, that, that we, you know, we talked about, we've all been given fire from creator. But in a practical sense, it was the woman who would keep that home fire, right? The teepee was our home back in the day, not anymore. I thank, thank God for that. But back in the day, the teepee was our home. And in the middle of the home, the center of the home, that was the, the fire. And it was the women who took care of that fire, took care of her home fire. And out of that, I thought, what about this name? Healing her home fire. So we're not even, so yes, we're talking about homelessness, and creating a space where she can have a home again but we're also talking about her spirit because she is on the streets for a reason so her story a little bit and i don't want to go too much into it but her story is yes residential schools is yes addictions is she's lost her kids in the the child welfare system so she was struggling profoundly on the streets. So fast forward a couple of years, she ended up passing away. This was right when the pandemic, right when COVID really hit our cities and our communities and she had passed away. They didn't say it was COVID, but it was um, pneumonia related. So she ended up passing away and that was just devastating because we're like, we tried so hard. How come this didn't work creator? 
and it, it's, it was a huge loss and it, it opened up our eyes. And sometimes, you know, there's moments in our lives, maybe I'm unique here, but there, there was a moment in my life where I thought, uh, game over, game over. I need a new career. I can't do this anymore. I think I'm in the wrong profession. Like it was the moment where I was like, I, I'm, I'm done. Let's, let's focus on something else. Um, Cause it was really crushing when that happened. But I got invited from her family to her funeral, to her wake. And then, and then they asked me to speak and I was not prepared for that at all. I think I was crying for like four days um, leading up to this moment. So I was just, I was emotionally a wreck and I really had to call in to creator for help. So I got up there and I spoke. And the one thing that I realized, here's this woman who's, who lived on the streets. And I'm not just talking the easy streets. I'm talking about the hardest corners of the darkest places in our city. Like she would survive. She would sleep. She would fight her way through this is a warrior woman. So I remember saying that she is one of the strongest women that I know. One of the strongest women that I know. I couldn't live like that and survive, but she did. So her name was um, in the Cree, her spirit name, which I didn't even know she had a spirit name, but it made sense. Her, her Cree name was Kamamak Esquayo, which means butterfly woman. And here's this woman that she, even in the darkest days, she would fly around. And she, was, she would go everywhere in the city and she had the most beautiful smile ever. So she, wherever she went, she brought her own light. She brought her medicine. So this is the initiative healing her home fire. Um, so we picked up, picked up. I had to lay the mantle down for a season because I just didn't know if I could go on. And I'm still, it's still pretty emotional and still pretty fresh for me. Um, but we did pick it up again in the last year, um, continuing to fundraise. But, but we're also, we, ha we do have money. You know, the community has been really good with small little fundraisers. Like we'd make um, uh, we cook Indian tacos. That's probably not the politically correct term. Um, many fundraisers like that just little fundraisers and we accumulated and it all adds up so so now we are definitely in the inner city definitely I think you know for me church is where the people are where the the orphans the vulnerable that is where church is and so that's where my lodge is on Sundays I have um so Trudy always has her, her sweat lodge ceremony on Sundays and I can never go because I'm at church at the, in the inner city never go I can never go and then one day I realized this is my lodge with the people so so that really helped me to be be okay with missing that sweat lodge ceremonies on Sundays with Trudy and the rest of the women I'm with the people and this is my lodge so this is a picture. I love this picture. I felt there was a, a moment where I was like, no more asking permission. No more seeking places like free places and venues. We're just going to set up right where the people are. We're going to offer ceremony. So I asked Trudy if she would be willing to do um in spring so the spring season and new seasons coming if she would be willing to offer a pipe ceremony for the people and whoever shows shows but it's you know showing the community that here we are we're gonna come to you so as you can see in the back of this picture um there is remnants of the night before so it was once a tent, it was once somebody's home and her home got burned down. Uh, because what happens in the summer, I mean, sorry, what happens in the winter when it's still cold out, the light candles, 
or, or light a little fire that will help them in some way to keep warm. And so that, that one turned tragic and that's actually really common. So we set it out, I was like, okay, well, sorry, this is where it's at. There's, you know, remnants of addictions and poverty all over us. And there's a, you know, someone's home got burnt down right there. I was like, this is where we're at. So she brought her suitcase. Actually, I don't even see Rosie in this picture. So maybe she left Rosie in her vehicle and um, she lifted her pipe. She lifted her prayers. So again, this was a moment where the, I asked the elder or the elder sees the call of the community, this matriarch, and she responds without hesitation, without anything other than tobacco. So for us, tobacco is, is the, the protocol. She required nothing else. And sometimes she'll say to me, are you giving me enough tobacco? So just ask me the request. So she's really beautiful. So bringing the prayers to the community, where the community are at. So oftentimes we, you know, set up, you know, church and service and we want people to come to us. We want community to come to us. And sometimes that, that's good. And sometimes that works. But I think in this situation that it's like, it's time we go to the community. This is their land. They're living on these streets and we got to go to them. And so this is just a beautiful representation of the matriarch in action, doing her thing, doing what she knows best. And it was a beautiful day. So we had the ceremony, we had a feast that followed. Um, and the drummer, he, he was like singing his song and the whole neighborhood could hear him. So it was really a beautiful day. So again, this goes to what we talked about, out of her flows the deep well of knowledge that sustains community, out of her flows ceremony and stories and teachings that we need to hear that help and strengthen us. And so I just feel very honored and very blessed that I have this, another matriarch, another grandmother in my life. Um, I'm going to share a quick story. Uh, and I think we're done with this PowerPoint. So I'm going to um, end with this quick story. So a year ago, I do not like spiders. I do not like bugs. I do not like insects. I do not like wildlife. Only if you know they're far away in a picture book, then I can appreciate them. But a year ago, I had this dream. Uh, but sometimes I sleep walk, I sleep talk, I sleep eat. So a lot of times I'm, I'm half awake and half still sleeping. And so I was dreaming and I look up, I'm laying in my bed and I look up and slowly descending down on me is this huge spider. I'm talking about the, the, the Australian kind of spider, like the big, the big one. And it's slowly descending upon me. And I'm thinking that this is reality. I think that I think, wow, there's a spider coming after me. So I wake up. So now I'm fully awake and I'm grabbing my pink fluffy pillow and I'm just killing. There's no spider there, by the way. I'm just killing this spider. And I was just so shook, like it felt so real. I couldn't even sleep in my bed. I went to my couch and I slept on my couch for the rest of the night. And then when I woke up, I was like, oh yeah, that was just a dream. That really didn't happen. So the next day I went and talked to Trudy. She has a teepee in the back of her, um, in her backyard, an 18 foot pole teepee right in the middle of Edmonton, right in the middle of the city. I go and I sit and talk with her in the teepee and I told her about this dream. I don't even know why I told her about it because I thought it was just so silly. And she said to me, oh, you had a messenger come to visit. We believe the spider is our grandmothers, that they come with a message. So what was your message? And um, so we talked about it a little bit. She said, usually the message is it's time for you to rest. And that just that message came timely. Fast forward two weeks ago, I'm walking in my room in my condo, bug free, insect free, spider free. So I thought I look for whatever reason, I look behind me and I look down, I look over my shoulder and I look down and there's a spider following me. Old me would have like, 
crushed that spider in an instant without a second thought. But I thought, oh, it's a grandmother. It's to cook them. And so that's all I thought. And then I'm like, how do I get this spider out of here? So then I kind of sweep it out my door. And I was so proud that I didn't kill this spider, this messenger from creator. And so I messaged Trudy right away. I said, I just saw a spider and I didn't kill it. Yay, me. And she said, oh, what was your message? And I took a moment and I thought, what was the message? And, and so for me, that that moment, I needed to hear that I'm not alone. And those words like, you know, were medicine. They brought tears to my eyes. I'm not alone. Sometimes I struggle with loneliness. So that was a moment where I, so I tell that story because we have messengers all around us. For me, my messengers are, are the matriarchs in my life, or they're the ones who say, hey, listen to the messages that are all around you. What has creator brought in your life today? And that, for me, that was a beautiful moment. It was a beautiful reminder that we are not alone in this world, that we're surrounded by love. One thing we lost in those residential schools was love, but creator surrounding us with love all around us in tangible and practical ways. And if we do, were just to pay attention, if we were just to open our eyes, if we were just to hear the message, you know, that spider is now a messenger to me forever. What's the message? Press cause instead of getting all scared and frantic. What's the message? What, what do I need to hear today? So we have messengers all around. So we just need to listen to them. So there's two, as I close with this, there's two words that I want to share, two Cree words. One of them is Wakotawin, which means we're all related. That there's kinship in every in everybody. Um, you know, and the ultimate, the ultimate glue that brings us all together is creator, is God. But we are all related as we're walking this path, as we're walking this journey. You know, and just even listening to the, some of the prayer requests. Yeah, it's heavy out there. The struggle is real. It's hard. There's sometimes you can't even listen to the news anymore because it's overwhelming and it's too much. But we're in this journey together that we're brothers and sisters. And so we're all connected. And that's what will make us stronger. That's what will help us to walk through the journey. And then the last word is segihitawin, which means love. My favorite thing. I, anything heart-shaped, I love. Again, for me, whenever I see hearts anywhere, I'm reminded that's my messenger too. That we are here because of creator's love. We are here because, you know, he sent his son to die for us because of love. And may we return back to love. And that's what the matriarchs, that's what the grandmothers teach me. So thank you so much um, for allowing me to share a little bit of, of what I know to be true. That's Wakotawin, that's community, that's relationships, that's kinship, and then love. That's why we're here. So I hope you find messages in your, your world today and this week that you are not alone, that you're surrounded by goodness and love from the creator. Hi, hi. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, wow. That was good. That was very good. Loved uh, listening to you at Nate's and good to hear it and a refresher of what you said now. And I uh, want to leave it over to uh, Brian Grover, who's going to lead us through a, a Q&A time. I'm, I'm sure there are many responses and questions out there. Same, we, same with here. We have a few, so... <laughs> it's open for Q and A, right? <laughs> Brian, I'm, I have a, a question or a sure. comment. <laughs> we, if for the past several weeks, we lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and the the spider that lives under the electrical panel next to our house is a black widow. <laughs> She's got her face covered, <laughs> and I have been really like wrestling with what do we do with it because it's got. That's not it. It's got its 
exact there. So it's really like I'm having like Charlotte's Web's feeling. It's really like it's taking care of its babies, but I'm like, oh, what do I do? Anyway, so yes, you have a timely message, and I'm gonna have to really figure out uh, what the message is here. You're about to have a lot of messengers. There. A lot of messengers are gonna come. <laughs> Paper bag. Whoa. And then take it out somewhere. That would be pushing my boundaries. If <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I would be moving. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, just uh, anybody have a uh, question or a comment, go ahead and just speak it out. And then uh, if we get a line up going, I will try to keep track of uh, the order. And, uh, and hopefully so everybody has a chance to say what they want to say. Oh, we got one over here. Sure. So, my name is Sean Dean Church, and I was listening, and I'm over here beating because I got an order I got to finish. So, what better way than to. Uh, Bean and listen, and then, like, just everything you spoke about, I'm just back here, like, yes! So, I've been, like, freaking out this whole time, but all that energy and, like, all your good words and, you know, just feeling, like, creator, I mean, women are powerful, so I think I needed that, and that, you know, God, my, my longhouse, my wigwam is, may not always be in the church every Sunday, because, you know, I also got stuff to do, but mine is in the depths of the juvenile detention centers. Mine is with the young, the angry young men. And um, that's, I don't have, like, my dad, Casey, he also mentioned a long time ago, because I was in high school, and someone was just like, where's your ministry? And I'm like, I don't have one. I just kind of follow my parents around. You know? <laughs> my mom and then my dad church planting in our house and all over and so just been a part of it but I'm like my ministry I don't know but it's even in high school it was the kids that I coached it was the team that I took to nationals it was the young girls I worked with it was the people that I mentored and now like you can think about it too it's my, my ministry it looks really different than you know God gave me gift to where I'm at a really unique space, you know, here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and, you know, we're ranked a lot for a lot of horrible things, and just being able to be honored, I'm just really honored that I get a chance to be a part of these young men's lives, even if they're in a really, really dark space sometimes, and, um, no, yeah, so, this is my bead work. Ooh, that little order. So I just did this one while you were talking. Wow. So um, looking to looking forward to see what the other half looks like. Good advertising. So thank you, Michelle. Place your orders now. <laughs> Place your orders. <laughs> Contact Sunday Church direct messenger. <laughs> That's great. I think I think for me, uh, also it's been one thing that I've learned along the way that. You know, sometimes we got to think outside the box that our lodges aren't just, you know, in this box that we've thought they were for how many years. And so we got to think outside that box and, um, you know, step into those places with authority, with power, with confidence that this is my lodge. This is where I'm going to do my thing. This is where I'm going to love the people. That's your lodge. That's church. Yeah. Like the Kelsey Pendaka has her hand up, but before she goes, <laughs> when Shandi was here, this friend of mine was uh, on this, <laughs> and he said, uh, "He said, yeah, Albuquerque is like heaven, but the angels will steal your car." What? So, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Pendaka, take it away with your question. Or uh, what was the other one? Um, Albuquerque. 
stay for the visit or where they ah, I can't remember what it was called anyway um so I wanted to just say thank you Michelle for sharing your wonderful story and uh, I really enjoyed that you talked about home fires tonight um because I'm going to be getting married on Wednesday and uh I started this new home fire with uh, my little two-month-old son and uh, with my daughter. Uh, it's a great story. I'll have to share it later. But <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I just really enjoyed what you were sharing about home fire and like the role of the, the women and the mothers and just how we have, we have huge responsibilities, especially for our children and especially, you know, like I'm still learning what the father role may be because my, my man in there, hey, <laughs> He, uh, he's really showing me what it means to have creator's love and, and how to heal from past hurts and, and stuff like that. Like creator has led me here and I have had, um, shaky, shaky feet, shaky legs, trying to decide if I'm going to follow or not. And like everything that you were saying with creator and, and with, with this uh, role that I've been placed in, it's. It really hit home for me and I really enjoyed what you had to share and yes and and yeah our home fires aren't just in one place they're they're like they're everywhere so <laughs> yes this is Manuel this is my soon-to-be husband hello <laughs> I can't hear you oh well now I can hear you yeah <laughs> eventually <laughs> but yeah yeah that's this awesome is- uh, congratulations on your upcoming nuptials and yes i'm very know. excited about it i'm very <laughs> excited about it very excited oh sorry there you go. well thank you for sharing kelsey um and yeah and our home fires are is kind of wherever our heart is you know you you gotta keep that fire lit some again I talked about some days some days I have like just my fire is just you know a couple of embers and I need to throw more logs on that fire and that's where having that good partner in our lives comes in handy sometimes they can help to throw logs on your fire to build you up and I think community does that as well for us so know that when we have to you know get our fires lit a little bit brighter we can rely on on community to help us with that i agree um that it's the exact word that that end goal in life that aspiration to continue for something is very important and while it may change several times throughout someone's life it's always something that's necessary because humans have to have something to adapt to. We get bored very easily and boredom leads to lazy practices. And it's, it can be really fun to be lazy nowadays. We've found fun ways to be lazy now. Uh, But it's, it's hard. Life's still a challenge because we went so quickly from being like every other species out there having to survive to, just not having to survive anymore. <laughs> we don't really have to try for it anymore. Uh, it's it's a lot simpler for us than it is for any other animal, except for maybe dogs. <laughs> yeah, she she found a spider too. There Ooh. was a spider that she told us about, and she told us that it was a grandmother spirit sending her a message. And it reminds me of the spider that he that he invited in. You know, so yeah. <laughs> protecting us so yeah well thank you thank you again for sharing your wonderful story and everything and i hope to hear more from you later so thank you thank you all right uh looks like you can be quick tani tanze my sister um you have to excuse i'm still in recovery from this long COVID um, health issues. But um, so the programs or the webinars, like are those, can other people access them that are outside the Edmonton area? Absolutely, yes, yeah. So how would one 
go about accessing them? That's a good question. So I just, um, right now, my website is getting un- is under construction. So that should should be up again. I don't know what happened to it, but it should be up again in about a week. And then I'll have all my all the information on there. Um, Cause I have a new webinar, a new workshop, which is called the medicine you are. As so I'm really excited about that. So that's, that should be rolling out in a couple of weeks, but in about a week, my, my website should be up with all the new information. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. And uh, feel free to share your website on our uh, Good Medicine Way Facebook wall. Mm-hmm. You've got it going again. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure just about everybody here would love to check it out. All right. I don't see any other hand, so someone will just have to boldly speak it out. If you're, if you've got something in your heart. Michelle, I had a, a question. My name is Andrew. Um, <clears throat> obviously, recentering on 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 women as as matrilineal. In my own, you know, Cherokee people, we're a matrilineal people. Um, however, unfortunately, patriarchy has not just seeped in, but it's and violence against women within Native communities. And um, <clears throat> you know, like the Cherokee nation from the late 1700s until, you know, we were removed, it just became quickly sexist and violent. Um, A lot in in a way to adapt, but that's still not right. And, you know, women were just ripped out of the council and ripped out of, you know, where they belong. So do you have a message for like native men and even like non-native men, because it seems like in this charged climate, when people think of like women having power, there's so many men and probably white men that just get afraid or they want to fight because because they really think that that's what really white power is. <laughs> it, it's not, but it's not because in native ways it's different. So how do you address that? Because native men need to know how to recenter back on our tribal cultures, which I mean, my own and yours, and I think many, many across Turtle Island were, were, were matrilineal. I, I, from my understanding, is not all of them. But <clears throat> what is your message to to the men? Um, because there can be so much pushback when women need to take their place, like like their rightful place back. So I, that that's my question. Because you know, it really takes takes everyone. So. Yeah, I think that's a great question. I mean, I have so many stories and I realize this time is of the essence, but I'll share this one that came to my mind just now. I, we went into um, the prison for some sort of gathering. We were doing a gathering with some of the inmates and they actually have the gang members separated um, from the rest. So they actually, there's, you know, several gangs. And so they have their own, they're all separated. And whenever, the, and they're the toughest the toughest um, people in the prison systems. And so when the gang members would come through, um, and I was with a female elder, I was with a grandmother, I was with a matriarch, and immediately they respected her. They couldn't, they didn't know how to respect each other or other women, but because they knew she was an elder and the matriarch and they knew their teachings, even though they were lost along the way, but they knew respect. And I think it comes back to that is is respect the grandmother's respect, um, listen, or at least open your heart. So I think part of that is respect, but also listen as well, create moments, create opportunities um, to listen and to hear the stories, or maybe even, you know, reconcile, like even before I was able to talk about this, I had to reconcile my own issues with my own mother. Like, and that was hard. Like it was right in front of my face and I had to really face it. So I think part of it is, is the, a person's own reconciliation journey with what, what's going on internally as well. But I'd say the number one thing is respect. You know, we say respect your elders. I hear that so much. Right. Um, So I think that's important. That's a message I would tell. Hey, Andrew, uh, I threw a link in the chat 
Um, uh, a month or so ago, uh, we, uh, in one of our talks, we talked a lot about those kinds of issues and how uh, kind of patriarchy has gone into modern American theology, especially, and how that impacts uh, native thinking and stuff. So I threw that as a, as a video archive of one of our previous uh, meetings. So I threw that in the chat, and uh, so you can like, check it out there. I think the actual talk starts about a half an hour or so in. Um, but yeah, put this in the chat. And when did you want me to announce the next speakers? Uh, well, I, don't, I guess you could say that while people are thinking. All right. Uh, while people are thinking, if they have another comment, I just wanted to announce that the next few speakers uh, next Monday will be Sherry Russell, who is the head of Nate's. She was here earlier. She, 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 had she had to leave. So yeah. Sherry Russell will be next week. The week after that is Meryl Smith, who was also just... Um, I, mean, I believe graduating from Nate's, and then uh, Jerry Goins, Jay Goins, who he was up here earlier. Yeah, he had the he had, he had the also. flowing <laughs> white native elder hair. Really, long. <laughs> you get to come back in a couple weeks and see his flowing white elder hair. But um, <laughs> so that's the next few weeks here on Monday nights, and of course tomorrow night. To this week is a two for one uh, week. Tomorrow night at this time is Mark Charles. You know, with the whole doctrine of discovery, unsettling truths. So there you go. Hey, Michelle. This is Casey. I got a uh, question or comment. The importance of ceremony for women. Uh, my wife and I, Laura, she, she's on here now. But we, we took that very seriously. And Laura is uh, on the verge of being an elder. Is that how a good way to say it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, don't speak for her, but she's very wise, knows the tradition, and has made our family very bonded and influencing our um, daughters that we have, bringing them in along the way in a, in a really good way. The importance of ceremony for women what do you what do you see oh she popped in now that's laura there she's and now that i can't speak to women's issues but i'd like to hear about your your view on i believe that ceremony is absolutely integral um it, it helps to keep us connected not only to creator. I mean, we can walk in ceremony with creator every day and we do walk in ceremony when that sun rises in the east, that ceremony, that's creator meeting us for another day. But I also think that there's something beautiful when people come together, when women come together, well, when community comes together. And so ceremony just brings that beautiful gift of connection that we're meant to have with one another. So it's vital vital to our health and well-being, vital to um, walking in a good way. Uh, I have another story, but we're, I'll, I'll stop with the stories because I could tell stories all night long, but it's vital. Ceremony is vital. Um, but also, we don't limit to what ceremony looks like. I was given permit, I don't know, permission perhaps is, that. well, that's the word she used. I was given permission about eight years ago from an elder, and she says, you know, we have our old ways, we have our ceremonies have, that have been around, but we also have new energy, we have new ideas. And so create ceremony, of course, in, in with the blessings of the elder. Um, so, you know, ceremony, you know, sometimes we box it and we say it's only this, this and this and this, but we got to be open to you no know, ceremony is me when I, when I get up in the morning and I watch that sunrise in the morning. I think it's the Lakota, don't they actually run to the sun they have as they welcome the sun in the morning? So ceremony, so important, so important. And we gotta learn those ways. We gotta learn them to keep them alive for the generation because that's what sustains us as people as well. So, so important. 
that I, I can speak to on this is the importance of men in women's ceremony is that we are very we're encouraged to help encouraged to take part and uh, with the labor that takes place and my son and other men's son who part of the ceremonies we're learning with those ceremonies uh, especially the, the women's ceremonies is that now is the time that uh, this is our part to do the, the labor and make a ceremony go well and to bring the wood and dig the holes for underground cake and to show the young men the young boys that we're doing this because now you're your sister is uh, now a young lady. Yeah, treat her different. And we try to show my son that as we carry the ceremonies for each of our daughters. So, and now he's uh, getting ready to go into college. We're having a, we're shedding tears, but happy that he's moving on to that, that area of life. And but we have raised him. In, in a very good way, with all the respect for women and all that goes with that. So I do wanted to share that for the men that are joining us here. Chats. Like you did a really well-rounded job, Michelle. Thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. And Very maybe good. somewhere down the road again, we can share once your website gets up. And we can maybe talk about that, and maybe some of our our women will plug in. Be encouraged by your words on there. If there are no other, Brian? I don't see any other hands, so this would be the last chance for we uh, move to closing some. Closing song, Donna Ropa. Go into our closing song, and then Preston will be following that with our sending a sending off blessing. I thank you so much, Michelle. Yeba Domi, is that how you say it? We're kind of close. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, really great. But, uh, there's a lot I could delve into with the whole thing with our unsheltered relatives and treating them with respect and not getting overwhelmed by the enormity of the situation, which is making a difference for the person you're in contact with at the moment. Um, but I don't want to get on that soapbox because I'll go for a long time. Uh, but yeah, but thank you so much for sharing. All right, so yeah, we're going to do our closing round dance here. So we encourage you to sing along in your own space, dance along. Sing along. Dance. Get yeah. your own shakers, your hand drums, follow along, but mute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't throw us off here. Yeah, just, just because technology throws a delay in. Um, Are you guys seeing the going wrong cloud there? I hope so.
Adorava is a Mohawk word that means I love you. The I love you of Jesus is our most healing medicine. That we can pass on to others. All right, Preston. Okay. okay. Um, speaking from the Navajo ancestral lands of my people, so... Yeah, I like to really say that, especially when we were like one of the few tribes being able to come back to our own lands and be able to live here. Um, very moving. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. There's just a lot of ways to think about something, but also another way to actually how would I say those exact same words, but to a male person or a male college student and have them understand? Um, especially when, like you said, we're very different, but we're still very similar. But the words sometimes can be come off harsh to women, but they all come off and very loving. So with these next words, I want to be as soft and gentle as I pray us out. <sighs> with us in the open posture, Lord, I am so thankful for us being able to have speakers that speak on so many different top topics that lead us to you, that allow us to learn more and be able to have different perspectives of how you are working in this world and how you are moving the people of this world to come closer or one step closer to you and allowing us to understand what we can do or ideas we can bring to our sectors of the earth. Thank you for bringing Michelle and thank you for the wonderful music and praise and allowing us to honor and dance even in hidden and silent. I just am so grateful for this day, allowing us to be so much work for you. And so much work of love to spread out to everyone. Thank you. And this night to be rejuvenating to all of you and recharging so that we can have a more tremendously work week. Thank you all. All right, Thank you. you for coming. Hey, good night, good all. Good night, everybody. Good night, yeah. And hopefully, we'll see you, we'll see you tomorrow night time. for Mark Charles, and then next week for Sherry Russell. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank Powerful, you. wonderful words, lots of notes of appreciation coming through the chat. Um, yes, thank you so much, and see you all later. Okay, have a good evening, everyone. Blessing.